All right, guys, so you're wondering whether Raspberry Pi 4 can really be a desktop replacement. So what I'm going to do is I will walk you through my system that I have set up, uh, which is uh, Pi 4 uh, with an overclock CPU. So instead of showing you a bunch of meaningless uh, benchmarks, uh, I'm going to walk you through uh, common applications and you can see for yourself uh, how fast they are, right? Okay, uh, let's talk about the system that I will be using today. Um, it's a Raspberry Pi 4 uh, with 4 gigabytes of RAM. I have uh, overclocked it to 2.1 gigahertz. Uh, the factory clock speed is 1.5. So, you know, it's a 40% boost. Um, I did have to use an aftermarket cooler for that, uh, but I'll talk about that later. Uh, so you, as you can see, uh, I also overclocked the GPU to 650 megahertz. Um, so yeah, no, I haven't seen any issues so far. Um, you can see my temperature in the top right corner. Uh, right now we're at a comfortable 36, 35 degrees, something like that. Um, you can also see my CPU utilization in the top right corner as well. Uh, but don't pay too much attention to that because I have a screen recorder software running in the background. So this is not um, accurate. Okay, uh, let's move on. Uh, another thing I want to show you guys is uh, how much it costs. Um, I know that you may have seen somewhere that, hey, it's a $35 computer. Well, um, it's not. You have to buy other stuff as well. I mean, the board itself would be, you know, $35, the base model. Uh, but once you look at other stuff you need to buy, uh, it really isn't. Let's look at the file that I prepared. Uh, so I basically created three different uh, price options uh, so you can see how much it really costs and uh, what you need to buy to make it into a functional uh, computer. All these options uh, you can see in the description uh, below as well. Uh, so if you wanted to buy uh, these items, you so I created uh, the recommended, the minimum, and kind of the performance uh, option. Uh, so let's walk through the recommended uh, option. So the Raspberry Pi with four gigs of RAM will uh, set you back about sixty-one dollars right now on Amazon. Um, the price could be different where you are. You do need a good power supply, uh, so 3.5 amp is what you need at the very least. Uh, so that's about $12. So I'm also including a USB flash drive uh, in this option. So it's about 22 bucks for 128 gig drive on, again, on Amazon. And that's what I'm using right now. Uh, micro SD card, um, 16 gigs is about six bucks. So yeah, that's, that's another item. I'm using an aftermarket cooler. Uh, it's called Ice Tower Low Profile Cooler. Uh, it's uh, roughly $23. Uh, I think it's worth it. I'm able to overclock the Raspberry Pi to 2.1 gigahertz with that cooler. And you can see the temperatures uh, never break into even 40 degrees. So I think it's worth it for 40% improvement. Uh, you need a micro HDMI to HDMI cable uh, to plug your Raspberry Pi in. Uh, keyboard mouse combo, uh, $15. If you already have a keyboard and a mouse, you don't need that. So you can subtract that from the total. So this option will run you about $150. Okay, let's look at the next one. So this is what I would consider the bare minimum. Um, in this one, Raspberry Pi 4 is a two gigabyte model instead of a four gigabyte. So it will be $45 instead of 61. Um, you still need a good power supply. So that's 12 bucks. Micro SD card, I've bumped up the size to 32 gigabytes versus 16 uh, versus the previous package, just because you're not going to have any other storage media. Um, keyboard mouse combo, again, 15 bucks. Uh, if you already have it, you don't need it. So subtract it from the total. Uh, you do need the micro HDMI to HDMI cable and we're about $90 here. Okay, now let's look at the performance package. So the main difference between this one and the recommended one is the change of the storage device. So in the recommended package, we were looking at the USB uh, flash drive, and here we're looking at the NVMe SSD. Um, uh, you do need a couple items. So you need um, uh, the actual SSD, which will set you back about $55, and you need the USB 3.0 enclosure so you can connect it to Raspberry Pi. So that's another um, 26 bucks. So if you compare uh, the SSD to the micro SD card, uh, it's not even close. Uh, there's no competition. Uh, the read speed of the SSD is about nine times faster and the write speed is about 15 times faster. Okay, now let's compare it to the USB flash drive. Uh, so the speed will be vastly different. The read speed, not so much. 
Um, the USB flash drive was about 210 megabyte per second read the last time I tested it. And then the SSD was 302 megabyte per second. So about a third faster, but the write speed uh, was much, much faster. The write speed on the USB was 63 megabyte per second and the SSD was 249 megabytes per second. Um, it's almost, um, almost five times faster. Um, uh, so, but it will also cost you a lot more. So you'll now over $200 uh, for this computer. Okay, uh, next one. All right, now we're going to launch a uh, browser. Uh, so we're launching the default uh, Chromium browser that comes uh, with the Raspberry Pi system. Uh, so let's just try uh, going to techcrunch.com and see how fast it comes up and just try clicking through a couple links. Uh, so it's not too bad. I mean, it's pretty snappy. Um, uh, so let's look at uh, one of the stories. Yeah, I would say that pretty smooth. Okay, let's go to the startups. Yeah, very responsive very responsive so yeah so just uh, for internet browsing it's totally fine um, okay let's go to Amazon yeah loaded pretty fast for me um, um, yeah, one thing I want to note is that uh, my internet speed is actually not that uh, fast right now. I'm too far from the router. Okay, let's go to YouTube. Uh, it will probably take some time uh, to load, uh, but also I have some software running in the background. So you may see faster uh, speed on your Raspberry Pi 4. Um, so yeah, as you can see the video is loaded, so I'm not going to run the actual video uh, because you won't see a good representation on what it will actually um, look like. Um, let's look at uh, Google Docs. So let me uh, just quickly log in. And we will open the template uh, document. Uh, this is an equivalent to a Word document uh, in Microsoft. So let's just open this uh, brochure over here and uh, try to edit it. Okay, here we are. Um, let's see, so it's still uh, loading, but as I said, uh, it takes a little bit just because my internet speed is slow as well. Uh, but it's not, it's not bad, it's not bad. Um, let's uh, edit this uh, title. Okay, yeah, pretty responsive. Okay, let's exit out of here. Okay, so the next thing I want to show you are the Office applications that you can install on Raspberry Pi, uh, and they function really, really well. Uh, so this Office suite is called LibreOffice. Uh, it's a one-line install, uh, so very easy, very fast. Um, we're going to look at the LibreOffice Calc 
first. This is uh, an equivalent to uh, Microsoft Excel or a Google Sheet. All right, uh, it's loading. And here we are. So it looks like just Excel. Um, the UI does seem a little outdated to me, uh, but it's functional. Um, everything is there. Uh, so let's open a file that I have prepared. So this is a pivot table with three sheets. Originally, this was just an Excel file. And you see, I was able to open it without any modifications. Uh, so it looks good. Uh, let's uh, go to the next one. Uh, so the next file I want to show you uh, is a file with 10,000 rows of data. Again, uh, pretty fast. Um, I think the uh, desktop application is actually much faster on Raspberry Pi 4 than the Google Docs. So, um, you know, if you have an option or, you know, if, it, if you don't have any preference, I would say that LibreOffice uh, is probably a faster application to use uh, on Raspberry Pi 4. Okay, so the next application I want to show you is the Draw application. Uh, so this one is uh, similar to a Visio, I guess, in Microsoft Office. Um, you can draw different shapes, diagrams. Uh, yeah, looks looks pretty good. Now let's look at the PowerPoint equivalent. Uh, so this is called Impress. Yeah, again, looks like a, a PowerPoint application. Um, similar layout, similar style. You can create a new application from scratch. You can use a template. Um, again, pretty fast, uh, snappy. Yeah, I like it. All right, so the next application I'm going to show you is the LibreOffice Writer. So that's the uh, equivalent to a Microsoft Word. Um, let's open that one up. And I will open a template. So let's open a, a resume template. Uh, so it has the lines on here like a table, uh, but it's not going to be visible when you print it. Uh, so let me just hit a print preview so you can see what it will look like. There you go. Looks nice and clean. Uh, please don't use this for your actual resume. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay, now let's look at the development tools. Um, if you're writing software, uh, this would probably be of interest to you. So Raspberry Pi 4 comes pre-installed uh, with the Genie. I also installed Arduino IDE as well. Uh, so let's launch the Genie application. Uh, it's Genie with a G. Um, uh, you can see I added a dark theme. Uh, let me open one of my uh, scripts. Uh, this is uh, going to be an obstacle avoidance um, file for Arduino. Yeah, it looks great. I mean, it has the color coding and everything. Now, let's launch another important application. Uh, I find myself using it all the time. It's probably the smallest uh, one here <laughs> is just a calculator. So yeah, looks fine to me. Pretty fast, uh, probably under two seconds to launch. Okay, so what did you guys think? Um, I didn't want to answer the question for you, you know, whether it can be used as a desktop replacement. Um, as you can see, the programs in general perform pretty well. It's not 
as fast as a regular desktop. You know, let's say if you have a Core i5 and Core i7. Okay, what did you guys think? I didn't want to answer the question for you whether it can be used as a desktop replacement, right? I wanted you to see kind of how the application uh, work, how fast they are. Um, you know, it's one thing looking at some benchmarks uh, or some, you know, synthetic benchmarks and another thing is actually using it. So if you actually want to sit down and, you know, use it as a des desktop replacement, you want to look at some news, edit some documents, uh, this is what the experience would be like. Um, note that my system is probably a little bit faster than other uh, Pies, you know, it's just because it's overclocked. Um, but anyway, as you can see, you can totally use it for browsing, uh, document editing. It's not as snappy as, uh, let's say, Core i5 or Core i7 system, uh, but it definitely puts up a great fight, right? For the money, um, you have a f functional desktop, right? That's great. And um, it's not a $35 desktop, right? It's not a $35 um, item. You have to add a bunch of other stuff. But nonetheless, I mean, you can squeeze in it under $100. Um, the only thing you'll need is a monitor um, or a TV, which I assume you already have. Okay, uh, let me guys know what you think about the video. Uh, please add a comment below. I would really, really appreciate it if you like this video as well and subscribe to my channel. Uh, let me know what other videos you'd like to see. Um, anything related to uh, technology. Thank you guys.